I'm a ceramic artist and I have been working with clay for almost 12 years. And I actually got to it, funny enough, through video. I was working in New York City as a videographer and a reporter. But what I was really craving was doing something very manual, something using my body. A friend of mine invited me to come visit her at a place called the Rochester Folk Art Guild, which is in upstate New York. She invited me to come there for a weekend. Um, uh, it was called the Craft Weekend, and so each craft studio at the Folk Art Guild would put on a workshop for the weekend, and I was signed up for the pottery workshop. and. I hadn't ever taken a wheel throwing class or um, a pottery class and I completely fell in love with the medium. I, it felt so grounding to work with clay, with water, with the elements, with mm -hmm. fire. Um, it was, it completely sucked me in. And after that one weekend, it was three days, long weekend, I talked to the master potter there, Annie Schliffer, about like how can I come back and do this you know, in a more committed way. And she said, well, you could, you could consider the apprenticeship that we have here. And um, that would involve moving to the Folk Art Guild. It's a residential artist community and working in the pottery studio every day. I was like, oh, I'd really love to do that. I went back to New York. I was back at my jobs. That fall, I moved up to the Folk Art Guild and quit my jobs, left my apartment, moved all my stuff up to this tiny little community where I lived in a, an off-grid cabin for a year and a half. I um, got to learn everything about how a studio runs. So I was, I was throwing on the wheel and learning how to throw on the wheel. I was also learning how to mix glazes and make clay and how to um, fire work in the kilns, how to fire the gas kilns there. We would order raw materials and then mix it. We had these big giant mixers, like this big around, industrial mixers. And we would mix all of the, the mined materials. And we would um, so run it through the mixer, weighing out all the ingredients first, and then, um, and then pug it. So like through this big pug mill, and then we'd keep it in this big giant um, rolling cart. So yeah, there, there was how I learned how to, how to run a studio, how to, how to throw, how to be a potter. I really loved, loved it so much. And I knew after just a few months, I knew that that was my calling, that that was my profession that I was destined for. And um, that's what I've been doing for the last 12 years. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Annie firing the gas kiln, which was huge. You could stand up inside of the kiln and, um, you know, we would load it from essentially like taller than me um, from the floor to the ceiling, mm -hmm. from the back to the front of the kiln. And I remember when she turned that on and had the burners going and once it reached temperature and how this entire mass of, you know, stacks and stacks of pottery, hundreds of pots, um, were all reaching, you know, like 2300 Fahrenheit and it was just radiating heat. And I remember just this feeling of exhilaration and inspiration from the power of that. And it was really the firing of the kilns that I felt so really like sucked me the most into the craft. I think like sealed the deal for me with pottery. Here in my studio, I have an electric kiln where I bisque my work. Um, but I go various places to fire it. I go to my studio here in Eugene, um, where there's a gas kiln that I fire. And then I also travel to um, Pleasant Hill, where there are four different wood fire kilns. And those are kilns that um, require a whole team of potters to fire over the course of several days. The Onagama is 30 feet long, and you can stand up inside, and it takes anywhere from like six to 12 people to fill it with their work and then fire it over the course of five days, nonstop around the clock, throwing wood into the kiln. And I just love that aspect, the fire aspect of ceramics. I think that working with the elements, with clay from the earth, with fire, with water, um, it, it makes ceramics this 
this quintessentially like place-based craft. Selling my pottery and having my pottery be something that's for my community and people that are also here feels really special. Like, you know, having face-to-face -face contact with the people that are buying my work feels really meaningful to me. I've, I've thought at various points, do I want to scale this up? Do I like the production rate that I have? All of my pieces are individually thrown, individually trimmed, individually like handles applied, individually glazed. It's, each piece is made with a lot of intention. You know, that explains also like why the prices are higher than something that is mass produced that's say slip cast or you know from a factory like each piece demands a lot of effort. We live really close to the river. I, I think that the rivers in Oregon are so beautiful. I mean how connected all the life is around the river. Um, we spend a lot of time canoeing and camping and I, I love to be near the water. Becoming a mother really like refined what it is that I want to do in pottery because my time is so much more limited that I get with my craft. It really solidified that continuing to do ceramics is deeply important to me and to my, not only to my like identity and sense of purpose, but it also is my passion. Figuring out a way of integrating my family life with my profession and my calling as a ceramic artist has been you know it's had these these ebbs and flows mm -hmm. um, my studio is at home my children are a part of of this we know a lot about like how to be in the studio they they really could actually probably sit here quietly and be completely fine but it would be very distracting to me <laughs> Yeah. yeah <laughs> but I work often in my studio with them there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really shaped my work too. I just spent the last uh, year and a half really working and fleshing out this uh, sculpture series that was all about motherhood. And they were completely different from any of the work I had ever done before. It, they were mostly abstract pieces that hang on the wall and all wood fired and it was a different way of working. and. Um, I got a grant from Lane Arts Council in the city of Eugene to, to kind of develop and do that work. And then I did a show just in April showing all of that series. There's about 15 different sculptures that I made. Is she drinking out of your cup? So rude. Kalisi. Okay,